Okay, this is the um, first in the series of the female reproductive system. I'm going to start with uh, contraception. So the topics we're going to do a little bit of female anatomy so we can understand how contraception works and also some physiology too, especially when you get to hormonal treatment of or hormonal prevention of contraception. So first, uh, the female anatomy, the uterus. This is um, showing a depiction of the uterus. Of course, these are the ligaments, the vagina, and then the ovaries and the fallopian tubes and the fimbria collecting um, the eggs as they're released. So looking anterior to the uterus, what is that structure that lies directly anterior to the uterus? So it's lying between the uterus and the pubic bone right here. And the answer, it's your bladder. So it's important to know these structures, anterior and posterior. So here is the female urethra, the vagina, and if um, you're the person that's putting in a Foley catheter, that's catheterizing of the bladder, you want to be sure that that stays very sterile. So you want to pick the opening that's anterior to the vagina. So here's all the structures from the uterus, the vagina, the urethra, and then the four is the ovaries, and then of course the fallopian tube. And notice here is the ureters that are coming down and they frequently get damaged with any type of pelvic surgery. Here's a depiction, your bladder, your baby's first squeeze toy. First question, your sister has her tubes tied and gets pregnant three months later. What or which structure was cut by mistake? Was it the fallopian tube or the round ligament? Answer is it's the round ligament. So notice here how the round ligament is right there next to the fallopian tube. This is a visible potty um, depiction that I blew up showing you in blue the round ligament, the right and left round ligament. So during um, sterilization, when your tubes are tied, when somebody ties the tubes, they will send the specimen to pathology to verify that the um, correct tube was removed. So for verification. So the round ligaments support the uterus and of course the fallopian tubes right here the pink are the ones that are carrying the fertilized egg to the uterus for implantation. Medical scenario. So a friend of yours, we're gonna call her CJ, comes to you asking about contraception. What is available that has no hormones or drugs? What's the best way to prevent uh, sexually transmitted diseases? Which one is the most effective against getting pregnant? So that's what we're gonna go through. All these different options that are available and what is most efficacious. I put these in three general forms of classification. The barrier method, there's a condom for men and a condom for women. It's called a cervical cap. 
the diaphragm. And if uh, you don't add any spermicide, then it just becomes a pure barrier if you use a diaphragm. Then there's a sponge that goes into the vagina. The next group are the hormonal. And the hormonal will include pills and also rings. There's a cervical ring that has um, hormones in it, dermal patches, implants, um, Depo Provera shots. There's a plan B, a morning after pill um, that can be given. It's a high dose uh, hormones to slough the endometrial lining so that if the, if the egg is fertilized, um, the endometrial lining is not viable for carrying a pregnancy. And then the others, uh, the general, these copper and progesterone releasing IUDs and also spermicides. So just a solution to kill the sperm. So the, by far, um, the best overall protection for um, protecting against sexually transmitted diseases are the barrier and the um, birth control pills or um, hormonal because it creates this um, improved mucus barrier for um, infections. So condoms along with um, hormonal birth control is the best protection overall for um, preventing sexually transmitted diseases. All right, so of these three that I've listed here, which one is the most effective form of preventing form of pre preventing pregnancy? Is it an IUD, intrauterine device, a birth control pill, or condoms? And the answer is, it's the IUD. Basically because Birth control pills are dependent upon your GI tract. So if you have diarrhea, if you get sick, so it's dependent upon absorption within the GI tract. An IUD is not. So this is a pretty good chart showing the least effective way and the most effective way to prevent birth control. So at the bottom end are the spermicides, uh, fertility aware, awareness. The other term for that is the, um, you know, the, what is that called? The timing method or um, also people that use this type of um, planning or the withdrawal, they call those kind of people parents. They're very poorly effective. Then of course, going up is the diaphragm, the condoms, the sponge, the cervical cap. And then the next effective are the shots like the Deepa Provera, oral contraception, the ring that has hormones in it and the patch that has hormones in it. And then the most effective are these IUDs or these implants that stay in there. And of course, sterilization the most effective if you're cutting the correct tubes. So let's go talk about the most effective besides or the most um, effective reversible form of contraception. So IUDs, intrauterine device. This is a medical um, office procedure. The, um, it turns into a T, but it um, opens up like wings, like an umbrella. So it's placed between the cervical, into the cervical opening and then released. The thing that's so uncomfortable about IUDs is the cervix, going through the cervix. And that's what makes, um, labor so uncomfortable is that it's that progressive dilation of the cervix, very uncomfortable. So it's just that period of moments of 
for the cervical dilation that makes an IUD uncomfortable. But once it's placed, it's not. And if you get a really nice OBGYN that does a little cervical block, um, local anesthetic, you don't feel it. There's two types. There's a copper IUD, and the copper releases, um, it's like a spermicide. It doesn't improve menstrual flow, um, but it's the copper that kills the sperm. The other type of IUD is the progestin, and it has a, um, of course, the hormone. It thickens the cervical mucosa, so it blocks the sperm. It also suppresses endometrial developments. So um, it's a great choice for people who have really heavy menstrual flow because you're getting a small amount of hormones. So some people with the progestin IUD can even stop having um, menstrual flow. Well, that's a good thing. Um, it can be associated because of those small amount of hormones can be associated with a little bit of um, acne. So there are potentially um, differences. And so it kind of depends on your personal situation, which type of IUD you'd go, you'd go with. So let's go talk on about hormones and the hormonal contraceptions. Okay, let's, we got to go back to our endocrine system again. Which endocrine gland is responsible for secreting gonadotropin releasing hormone? This is a review back into endocrine. Is it your anterior pituitary, your hypothalamus, or your pineal gland? The answer it's your hypothalamus. Remember, anything that releases hormones, anything that has an R in it, gonadotropin R releasing hormone is the hypothalamus. So the hypothalamus releases GnRH, stimulates the anterior pituitary to produce these two hormones, LH, luteinizing hormone, and FSH, follicle stimulating hormone. And they affect the ovaries and the ovaries are producing estrogen and progesterone. So within um, the ovaries are these follicles. So FSH, LH stimulate the ovaries, and this is a negative feedback loop. So just like taking exogenous testosterone or anabolic steroids, taking um, medication like estrogen and progesterone tells the hypothalamus that you've got plenty of estrogen and that you don't need to stimulate the um, ovaries and then you stop this follicular development. So it breaks that positive feedback, it breaks that negative feedback loop. Okay, so here's the scenario. A person notices your birth control pills, and it's a estrogen progesterone combination, and they see that in your purse. They kill, accuse you of killing unborn fetuses by taking these pills. Okay, so how do birth control pills work? Do they prevent fertiliz fertilization from happening, or do they destroy the embryo after fertilization? And the fact is they prevent the fertilization from even happening. So essentially it breaks that um, negative feedback loop. The follicle, follicle, follicles quit um, developing and then um, oocytes are not being released. So birth control pills also, because of the um, hormones, create a barrier, a mucus barrier. 
So they prevent the follicular, the um, follicles from developing and releasing an ovum, and they obstruct sperm access. So in summary, we've talked about the surgical sterilization, how they excise the, you know, a portion of the fallopian tube, send it off to pathology to ensure that they've got the correct tube. And then we've talked about non-hormonal sponge diaphragm condom, IUDs as the most effective reversible type of contraception. Um, and there's two types, the copper, and then um, the one that has progestin in it. And that those are, you'll have two different types of uh, contraception with those. So it depends on your specific needs, which type of IUD you would choose. And then the combination of barrier as well as pills is best to prevent sexually transmitted diseases. So my final thoughts, birth control pills should be for men. Makes much more sense to unload a gun than to shoot at a bulletproof vest. Any questions, please um, 